The Healing Foundation acknowledges country, custodians and community of the lands on which we live and work. We also pay our respects to elders and to stolen generation survivors of the dreaming and of the here and now. We recognise the ongoing nature of trauma experiences for First Nations peoples and commit each day to survival-led intergenerational healing. I'm Bo Delacruz and today I'll be having a yarn with Arnie Glendra Stubbs from No More Legal. Welcome Arnie Glendra, how are you? Yalamandu Marang, my darling. So, Love. Um, Lovely to meet you finally. <laughs> yeah, true, eh? Um, I, I'm the elder in residence at No More and I'd like to pay respects to the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation where our lovely office is. And thank you for this opportunity to talk about um, the important work that No More does to helping our mob get truth, justice and healing. A lovely, Auntie, and thank you so much for joining us. Annie Glenda, have a yarn for me about um, yourself, uh, your connection to the Healing Foundation and now your role at No More Legal. Well, um, my, uh, I was part of the little um, committee that set up the, um, the, the apology with Kevin Rudd back in the day and then part of one of the things that he really wanted and pushed for was a Healing Foundation. So I was part of a little committee that said, no, we'll have truth, justice and healing as part of our um, ongoing um, commitment because you can't just put people back together and they're healed and you can't have people traumatised and, and it's not a you know quick fix. It takes a long time and it needs to be done in a culturally safe and trauma-informed way. So um, I'm really proud to be still asked to do stuff for the Healing Foundation because that you do fabulous work. Thank you, Annie. And now you're with No More Legal. Tell me about your role there. So I'm the um, elder in residence at No More Legal Service, which sounds a bit of an unusual position, but it's it's like about giving cultural support to the staff because we have a lot of staff here and making sure that everyone is comfortable because when you're telling your account of what's happened to you as a child, it's very, very distressing. And we, we work here on a, we're independent, we're free, and we do things that are gentle and kind and we take it at, a, at our client's pace. Mm -hmm. So we, we're, there's nothing rushed when we're doing the account of what's happened because people have to go on their own pace. And, you know, a, a lot of our mob um, aren't always um, trusting of lawyers or mm -hmm. doctors or people in the position of power. So for us to have 11,000 people that have taken us into their into their uh, most sacred space, mm -hmm. I'm really proud of the work that No More does. Yeah, and it says a lot for um, for the organisation as well. Arnie, we're here to talk about the National Redress Scheme. Can you tell me a bit about it, please? Um, the National Redress Scheme is for um, survivors of child sexual abuse in, in institutions. So that's pretty much anything that you can think of as an institution, anything that's outside the home. It can be a ballet school, a, a church, a school, um, you know, anything that's outside the family home is considered an institution. And um, the redress is for anyone that has been sexually abused in any institution. So it's... Um, that's why we end up with so many people that are brave enough to come forward and talk to us about what's happened because um, the, our, our, when it says no more, that's our mm -hmm. name, which is about to know more about what we're doing, but also NO, no more to child sexual abuse. Because this Amazing. is the hardest conversation that anyone's ever had to have in this country. We've had yeah. DV, we've had mental health, and this is the most hardest conversation but also a really important conversation and they're discussing something that's so deeply rooted aren't they that is not easily brought up but being brought up by you know the professional people at no more legal and, isn't and, it and the media like there's there's people who've come forward that have held this secret this dark secret for 60 and 70 years and and nobody's known in their family. We've had an 82-year-old say to me, his wife say to me, I always knew something was wrong with him, but I never knew what it was. And he he um, said something in a, in a forum where we were talking about no more, and I thought, wow, 
not the place that you really want it to have have, have that happen. You want it to be more private mm-hmm. where no one's there. But he said, I want people to know that this did happen. So, you know, the brave is the brave. Yeah, he was waiting for that platform, wasn't he? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And, you know, I tried to sort of, you know, warm him down a bit. But, no, he said, I want to say this. I want people to know that this happened. Wow, that's amazing. Arnie, tell me, what are some of the services that No More Legal offer and how do you guys support those applicants? So we offer um, free legal advice, which means we're free, we're confidential, we're independent. We have lawyers, counsellors, financial counsellors and Aboriginal engagement, to- Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander engagement advisors and provide a space, safe space to talk about people's experiences. Because it's not a story, it's an account of their life, I believe. Everyone says, oh, I'll hear their stories, but it's an account. Mm. Yeah. And how long, like, I mean, that the stories and I suppose uprooting that information, like you could have, you know, a small timeline or you could have a long timeline. Is, is that something you find when, you know, people are starting to reveal this information? Yes, yeah, some people go, uh, you know, like we'll say, oh, look, we'll do 45 minutes. And they go, and they'll go, yeah, and and they just want to get it out there and get it done. Other people, there's no time. If you want to mm-hmm. take forty five minutes every every week or every every time your daughter's there to hold your hand, mm-hmm. that's the way that we will do it. You'll be allocated that time. But some people just want to. I've just decided this is what I'm doing, and then I'm going to do it. And other people, it's at their pace. Yeah. At their pace. And that's very important, isn't oh, it? Oh, it is really important. Mm-hmm. It is really important. I mean, Glenda, what are some of the issues that have come up for, for some of the applicants of the scheme? Um, so there's um, issues about reliving what's happened. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also when people get their payment, you know, people are unmugging mm-hmm. them, their money. Um, that also that why we have financial counsellors is so if you've got a debt that 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 money is um, isolated they can't take a take that if you've got a mm-hmm. central debt or something like that um, accessing records can be a, a problem mm-hmm. um, for some people um, and um, yeah so there's a few issues that come up but there's uh, because we've been going since the first day of the Royal Commission, there's hardly anything that can come up that we haven't um, have happened, mm-hmm. worked out, and sorted out. So we do hear a lot of that humbug around when you know applicants are having their money in. Does no more legal have support around that? I suppose or education around it prior to. Yeah, them getting that's their why claim our, back. Our financial counsellors will say mm-hmm. that this would be really good if you um isolated this money in a new account mm-hmm. or put some of it in a new account or have so uh, have so it's going to be two people to sign someone that you trust. Um, so there's you know just given that advice, they don't have to take that advice because mm-hmm. when they get their payment, that's their money. Mm-hmm. But you know so, some people go I I. I want to give the kids a little bit, but I want to put mm-hmm. the rest away from my, to buy myself a car, mm-hmm. pay for my funeral or to fix up my something, you know. Okay, yeah, so. perfect. And, Glenda, we understand that there may be some confusing parts to the process. How do future applicants find out which is best for them? Well, it is confusing because there's been so many schemes and so many different things, so there's, like, and each state's different. <laughs> so there's, you know, like there's a national redress scheme, mm-hmm. there's the Royal Commission, there's the stolen wages, like, yep. you know, does your head in. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it's not one one thing fits all, is it? No. And each mm-hmm. state's different. Like Victoria's just added something and now we've got the Northern Territory and the Jarvis Bay and the um, ACT Mm-hmm. Um, stolen gems, um, redress happening. Mm-hmm. So yeah, people are confused. But what what our lawyers will do? They'll they'll work out which 
which way and which pathway will be best for the client. Mm -hmm. Because they might, you know, some people, they want to go for civil. Some people want to have their perpetrator, you know, like. Yep. And so, you know, they'll be given their options. Yeah. Victims of crime, whichever, and redress is an, e- an easy option, whereas they'll say, well, you know, there is also civil options. The redress is the easiest option. Yeah, and this has obviously been evident with the amount of clients that have been oh, yeah. successful through No More Legal, yeah. hasn't it? And it doesn't mm-hmm. take a long time. Like you can mm-hmm. be in a civil case for, you know, you hear people who are in a civil case for years and years. There's, mm-hmm. there's um, And our mob get priority um, mm. service. Yep. So because, you know, we are, we don't have the life expectancies of um, our non-Indigenous brothers and sisters, we're given priority. Mm-hmm. And if you have any um, any um, health needs, you get fast-tracked. Yeah. Are older, are older applicants, are they prioritised as yeah. well? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Older applicant People that are unwell are mm-hmm. prioritised. And each... Um, each month we have a, 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 um, a, a like a casework of, and people put forward their their most vulnerable and their yep. high priority clients and they'll get fast tracked and the NRS have been really good at doing that. Amazing. And Aglendra, are there any important dates or time frames when applying that applicants should be aware of? Yes, I mean, the scheme will be open from the 1st of March 2022 till the 28th of February 2026, which Mm -hmm. isn't long. Time flies. So, you know, and the applications will probably close six months before that, so their applications will be um, worked on. Yeah. So I say get in. Yeah. Because Before it's not that long. Time. everyone goes, well, well, I will put it off, I'll do it. It's not like bringing the washing in. You get yeah. around to that. This, yes. this is important here. So these deadlines are quite important, aren't they? they because are very... it, cause an application, you know, to for, for someone to bring up their their stories, yeah. you know, that could even take six months to yeah, actually get right. the full start story out. And the amount of applicants that you could be have, having would yeah, take a long time. We've had 11,000 already, which is a lot of applications. And that's from this year in March, was it? I guess so. That's what the numbers are written down here, and I'm not going to argue with them. <laughs> wow, that is amazing. So that's probably your biggest advice to, you know, any of our survivors out there that are thinking about applying for the redress scheme to get in as soon as you possibly yeah. can. And I know, that it, I know that it's hard, and I know timing is huge for our mob, and, and they've got to feel that it is the right time for them but I'm I'm really glad that you shared those dates with us thank you for that because yeah, that's really important. Mm-hmm. we don't want anyone to miss out and Glendra is there supporting documentation that applicants need to have before or when applying for the scheme I think you need a, um, a evidence that you're the person mm-hmm. um, like you know your license or your your um what do you call it? Your Some type of card. identification. Yep. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't think other than that. Like, mm-hmm. do you mean evidence that you're in the home or something like that? Because well, that's, even that's, like um, I know with the national archives um, and also state archives, is there could be files in regards to applicants and um, stolen gen survivors, especially. Um, would that be something that? would be, I suppose, vital when applying for the, the National Redress Scheme? No, I don't think so mm-hmm. because I think, you know, what happens is you, you tell the account of what's happened, you say mm-hmm. that you're in this, this home, they'll do the searching and see okay. that, that your time ma- marries up with what you've said and if you mm-hmm. name a perpetrator that, that 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 was somebody that was there and sometimes people, you know, might not remember that person but other people from that same institution might remember okay. that. So, yep. yeah, it's like secret squirrel. Mm. And that, yeah, that information does, you know, it is quite hard to remember, especially if it, it is a long time ago. Oh, so yeah. the and, fact you know, that... You put it in a, in a department, in a, in a container that you don't want to get out. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's, you know, we, 
they the guys here will do whatever they can to get the best outcome for you. Amazing. Thank you. Annie Glendra, are there any legal considerations applicants need to know as well? Well, I'm not a lawyer and mm -hmm. I can get in trouble for saying anything about the legal stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there is great lawyers here. We've got about 100 lawyers at, mm -hmm. at Noble, we, and we're in um, quite a few states. We're in New South Wales, Victoria, Northern Territory. Uh, well, we're in every state and Melbourne mm -hmm. does Tasmania. So we've got an office in most states and it's a free call number. And again, Dra, we've heard the, um, I suppose, the same claim farming. Can you tell me a bit more about this and how it can potentially affect our community members and um, applicants thinking about uh, coming in to apply for the scheme? Well, the claim farming is about people um, tracking down people to become clients mm -hmm. and charging them a large amount of money without telling them that there's a free free, 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 confidential legal service that won't take one cent of their money, not mm -hmm. money for copying records, not money for postage, not, not one cent. And they take mm -hmm. a large chunk of people's money that is their money. And that's for legal fees, isn't it? Yes, and, you know, mm -hmm. like they're a corporate organisation. They're, they're not a not-for-profit organisation. They make mm -hmm. money out of people's pain and they make lots of money. Annie Glendra, do you know of these organisations having the support system like that No More Legal has in terms of well, counselling, financial no, literacy, education? No. They don't have those services because mm -hmm. they're, they're, their main goal, corporate lawyers, and, you know, people sign up to be corporate lawyers and good on them if that's what they choose. But our lawyers and lawyers that work for CLCs and our Aboriginal Legal Services and, and Legal Aid are social justice warriors. They're not corporate lawyers that charge every three minutes for, for the time that they're using to, to get people's information. That's a whole different, that's an alien world. Mm. This and is what a, a, yeah, sorry, what advice would you give to, you know, survivors that are thinking of going and, and applying for the redress scheme? How do you, what would you tell them when they want to start that journey in terms of looking for the right people and the right organisations? Look, no more might not be for them. They might mm. have been sold some big golden, you know, water out here mm. but just give us a call we've got a free mm. number give us a call and we'll let you know their options because we won't take thirty five thousand dollars out of your money or half of what you you get we won't take one dollar you won't pay one cent because there's and i mean the money that you'll get from redress isn't a huge amount of money there is no amount of money that can compensate people for what's happened to them mm -hmm. but this is a pain as painless as it can be service that's there with nothing but your best interest at heart amazing Annie Glendra if you or someone you know may need support or someone to talk to you can call Lifeline Australia on 131114 or be on blue on 1300 224636 or head to www.healingfoundation.org.au forward slash support for more information.